Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I believe you all have the ability to unmute yourselves and that sort of thing, but please let me know if not. Um, and feel free to say hello. Good evening. Mr. Montague, good to see you. Same here. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Hi. Torrance Sutz. I'm in Ward 5, Bloomingdale. Good to see you, Torrance. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, VJ here. I'm about to be biking to 5th District Station, so I will not be camera on, but good to see you all. Please be safe. <laughs> It's good to see a lot of familiar faces. I'm Connor Shaw, uh, Councilor Parker as Deputy Chief of Staff. Just making sure I'm letting people in here. I turned the waiting room off, so now people should be able to just hop in. Um, and let's let's continue with um, introductions so that we can dive into the the meat of our meeting tonight. Um, my name is Melissa Littlepage. I'm Councilmember Parker's Communications Director. Um, I'm assuming you all know me since I don't think you would have been able to get here without reading my email. Um, but it's great to see you all. And I will pass it over to Huma. Hi, everyone. I'm Ahuma Imtiaz. I live over in Bloomingdale. I'm also the ANC Commissioner in 5E04. Um, passing it on to uh, Sherry. Good evening. Uh, this is Sherry Alston, and I live over near uh, the border of uh, Sargent Road and Eastern Avenue. So it's good seeing everyone tonight, and I will pass it to uh, Jeffrey. Thank you, Sherry. I'm Jeff Hatchard. I live in Trinidad. I'm going to pass it on to uh, Monica. Oh, you're muted, Monica. We can't hear you. Apologies. Hi, no everyone. Worries. I'm Monica, and I live in University Heights near Turkey Ticket. Great. Good to see you. I think that's everyone who's on for now. Um, I didn't mention I live in Langdon, um, very close to Commissioner Kapoor and to uh, Mr. Montague. Um, and I don't know if Connor mentioned he's in Eckington, but it encourages me to see Great representation across the ward, even with this smaller group here tonight. Um, so included uh, in the email that I sent to you with this Zoom link, we shared a document that has a summary of feedback and recommendations. Some of these are things that we've received from you all. Some of these are things that we've heard from neighbors, either through phone calls or conversations one-on-one -on -one or even emails. Um, and we wanted to try and gather that all in one place and go through it with you all tonight. So that's where we're going to start. Um, it's just going through one by one. Would love to hear your thoughts on these items as we go through them. Um, and then if we need to, I have the maps ready to go so that we can kind of, you know, get into the nitty gritty of looking at different routes and where they are on the maps. Um, oh, and one comment just wanted to point out that Torrance Hux, who is here, he introduced himself earlier in Bloomingdale, um, was not a part of the Ward 5 Bus Network Task Force last year, um, but he is a part of it this year. He attended our Ward 5 Bus Network engagement meeting, was really interested in contributing, and we were happy to have him join our um, task force. So thank you for being here, Torrance. Um, thank you. This time, you know, this meeting, our first task force meeting was in person with WMATA. We did lots of like map dissecting and we were in small groups. This meeting will be a little bit different, but i um, glad to have you here and to have your input on um, our feedback that we're going to send to WMATA. So thank you. Okay, let me share my screen. And this will just be the document that I sent out um, already but just so we are all looking at the same thing. Um, it looks like it's showing. Just let me know if you can't see it for any reason or if the font is too small, happy to zoom in. 
Um, so the first thing that we would like to be able to include in our formalized feedback to Amada is just appreciation for um, the changes that they've incorporated from some of our original feedback and highlight the things that we're excited to see and we hope they maintain um, in their 2025 bus network. So this especially includes the much improved bus service uh, for Fort Lincoln neighbors. Um, there's these important connections now to Colmar Manor, which has important retail, um, and to downtown. The D32 route um, goes from Fort Lincoln to downtown, and that's a great connection for those neighbors. Um, we're also excited to see something that I know um, Jeffrey in particular was passionate about um, last year in the task force, which is preserving service for Trinidad neighbors. The visionary draft network had shown some significant cuts, um, and fortunately, the proposed 2025 bus network shows maintained service for Trinidad neighbors to Washington Hospital Center and downtown in the D36, um, as well as expanded access to Fort Totten from Trinidad. Any other things that um, you all think we should be appreciating, highlighting positive aspects of this uh, proposed, latest proposal that we've seen from WMATA? Okay, I will keep us moving, but feel free to chime in at any point. Um, and you can also use the chat too, if things come to mind um, as we're going through. Um, oh, another aspect of uh, positive changes in this bus network, um, we want to celebrate and support the proposed D74 ser service, which would provide a new service along 12th and 10th streets northeast, as well as a crosstown connection to Petworth and Columbia Heights. Um, I wish I could just quickly hop over and show you what we are talking about here. Um, so let me change my screen share. Talking about the D74, I'm gonna try and zoom in on that here. As you can see, it goes down through Brookland here along 10th and 12th and provides this cross town connection over to Petworth. Go back to our notes here. Um, so the first thing that we want to reiterate um, in terms of feedback for WMATA on changes we want to see is the importance of frequent service along Rhode Island Avenue, um, including a, an express option. Currently the proposed D32 route, which we're excited to see, um, is a medium frequency or every 20 minute every 20 minutes or better. Um, it would be great to see um, high frequency service, uh, which Wamata is calling every 10 minutes or better. Um, and those are the red line, the red routes on their proposed map. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone here is on board with that, but happy to take any changes or comments that this group might have to that proposal. Let me let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past discussions and most recent discussions with the Transit Authority, they're only going to do, as they said, what is within the current resources. Right. So anything that that causes them to um, require additional people or money, um, they're not interested in. They said in the future, if we get more money, then we might might do it. Right. So one of the the, the, the um what is this the D you said D thirty two right yes let me switch over to the map but yes okay so that basically replaces uh, somewhere I have it on one of my spreadsheets but it replaces like the uh, G nine right what used to be the G9 we don't currently have the G9 um and it is comparable to the G8 in some in some aspects okay but the the 8 only um serves north of Rhode Island Avenue not south 
it, it, what it does is it doesn't go along Rhode Island Avenue. It does end up going downtown, but you're right. It doesn't go, it no longer traverses the Southern part of Rhode Island Avenue past the Metro station. Right. Okay. So, well, that's, that's the, the, the frequency. I, I'm a little bit concerned because the frequency for local service, um, which this would be, I don't want to confuse with the express service or uh, what I would call Maryland service. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want, because we had some recent development issues where um, there was an allusion to uh, high frequency bus service, but that high frequency bus service was every four local stops or every three local stops. Right. And the timing was such that the T18 and the T14 would come just prior to the 83 and the 86, making the 80, making those 80 buses low ridership because everybody else got tired of waiting and they jumped on um, a T bus if they could. Right. So I, I just want to make sure that the, the P1X, the P40, um, and the P10 um, don't get uh, disguised as um, higher high frequency because the number of buses going down the road is is greater. Right. That's helpful feedback. And yeah, I I also take your point um, about how you know if we're asking for express service on this you know, on the D32 Southern part of Rhode Island, um, because this is a cost neutral proposal, we are asking for them to maybe take something away from somewhere else. Um, so I, I hear that feedback. Um, Connor is mostly in the background taking notes. So I'm sure he, he got all that. Um, Connor, I see your hands raised. Um, feel free to chime in. Um, I think uh, Uma was first, so. Oh, okay, go ahead, Uma. Um, I was just going to say on the D32, it ends at Metro Center right now. So for a lot of folks that I've talked to, they've expressed concerns that the downtown serve, like they'll have to change buses to get to anywhere like Farragut Square, Franklin Square. And so it eliminates like a large, because of the G2 also being changed, it right. actually eliminates direct access to greater parts of downtown uh, because of this. And then the other thing is also this bus doesn't go frequently enough, right? So it's only 20 minutes. So in addition to it being more frequent, uh, in addition to it being only every 20 minutes, and then also eliminates a certain um, access for other parts of downtown for residents, um, which I think was something I heard over and over again, especially with the G2 combination. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think we might need to have some discussion or like make a decision about a trade-off and what we asked for, because in some ways, like maybe what we need to ask for is for the D32 to go to something like Farragut North or Farragut Square um instead of asking for express service i i don't know if we could ask for both of course but um i you know that i just i'm aware of the trade-offs wamata is making in their proposal and what they're trying to get um i'm wondering if we need to kind of make the same deliberations as we think about our requests I think the other element we, we had considered uh, last year was whether to advocate for um, one of those Montgomery County, or not, sorry, Prince George's County routes extending farther uh, west. I think we had said maybe the P1X or the P40 or their equivalents could go to U Street. And I'm curious whether folks think that's valuable or whether that's an idea that... Um, no longer needs to be um, advocated for. I like that. I mean, most people, there's a reason it has a terminus at the Metro. Like most people are taking that from PG County to get to the red line. Um, I, I'd be curious to know where those people are going, where they're ending up, um, especially if they're making some type of transfer to the green line at some point. Um, it is, you know, 
notoriously difficult to get from this part of Ward 5 to the U Street area, um, which is why things like this Crosstown D74 are so valuable because it gets you over to, to Petworth. And so I could see real value in extending that P40, especially if, it's, if they keep it as um, that low uh, high frequency route all the way to U Street. Mr. Montague. Okay, so here's here's unbeknownst to, to most people, I think, is the trade-off. Now, when we're we're looking at this as um the the visual uh we get this here or we don't get that there, and we don't uh, or you know, we might have to move something around. But the real the real background trade-offs that you may not be aware of are actually um, related to numbers of operators, numbers of um, vehicles, buses operated, and number of mechanics. And because those are the numbers that build the um, bus beyond um, the cost of fuel and, and, and this, that, and the other. I haven't worked there. That's the reason I know about that. So when we when we talk about the 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 frequency, what what they're showing us in in colorful terms, which is fine, um, what the routes would be, but we don't and and the frequency, but we don't know within a given time how many actual vehicles will be used. We don't know how that translates into actual number of operators that are required. We don't know how many mechanics are required to support whatever level of vehicles and operators that are being put on the streets. So when we talk about a trade-off, they're calculating um, what, what the, the labor re uh, requirement is versus what the demand is from riders. In addition, there's a, a union issue here because the Maryland um, routes are operated by local 922 which operates out of Landover Garage. And it makes, come, I don't know if it comes out of Andrews or not, but I know it's primarily uh, Landover. So the city lines all come out of um, local uh, 689 amalgamated transit. So those things weigh heavily on levels of service and um, the cuts just, just like when um, Madam Mayor announced that the circulator was going to be eliminated, and she made she made a promise that we would take care of the people who are operators on the circulators. But the the thing is, is some of those operators and some of those mechanics may not be able to transfer into either union if they're not in it already. So that's a little bit beyond what you what you're talking about, but I'm, I want you to be understand when we talk about trade-offs, we're talking about 10 buses an hour or three buses an hour. And if we do a trade-off and we make a line longer, then how many more operators are going to re be required to make the line longer? Or right. it, So I just want that, that in the people's, back of people's minds. Right. And the P40... You probably saw me going over here and looking. It's already, you know, it's already traveling some distance to New Carolina. Um, yes, to get to get to Rhode Island in the first place. Um, and this is, yeah. So Connor, when you suggest it continue, but possibly continuing to U Street, you're thinking it goes down Rhode Island, and then up. From um, I think we well, it could go up Florida Avenue, which in theory will have protected or not protected, but it will have designated bus lanes um, if things go according to plan. I see. Um, and I, I don't think it would be for all of those routes. I think the suggestion right. would be, you know, maybe the express route would give Rhode Island Avenue residents a way quickly to get to U Street with you know limited stops and that wouldn't be a huge impact on mm -hmm. on that route to extend it a little bit farther west. Yeah. The other option would be even 
potentially even just to Shaw, um, the Shaw Metro stop and library, um, which would likely be, I would think less complicated <laughs> to just stay on Rhode Island Ave and then turn around and go back up. Um, yeah, agreed. Yeah. I think we can move on. Okay. Uh, yeah, this <laughs> this particular point, I feel like I could stay on for a while. Um, I'll move us back to our notes. Okay. Um, this is something I heard uh, you discuss, Mr. Montague, at um, the Woodridge Civic Association meeting. And I also know um, Commissioner Kapoor has brought this up, but we do want to reiterate uh, our desire for continuous service on South Dakota Avenue between Fort Lincoln and Fort Totten. There's this section right here, particularly north of Rhode Island Avenue um, and south of 18th Street Northeast where there's no bus service. Um, and there's no real connection between the southern part of South Dakota Avenue and the northern part of South Dakota Avenue. Um, so we do want to reiterate that desire. Uh, Mr. Montague. Oh, I don't disagree. Last night, um, at, uh, probably Councilmember Parker could tell you, but at the meeting on South Dakota Avenue, the, uh, the I'll call it the planning session, um, DDOT actually came out and said that the there would be enhanced bus service on South Dakota Avenue, which was not true. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get an opportunity to, to contest that because if, if you knew about Better Bus, Better Bus said we might be able to offer it in post FY25, so, um, but not before then. Right. And they might have been referring to the fact that the C-71 stays on South Dakota now. So presently in the current E-2, um, in fact, I think I have it up here. Um, this is the current map. I want to say the current E-2, it goes down Sargent Road. Well, yeah, Melissa, so can you bring up the map so that we can see it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I th I'm looking at it and you are not. Um here we go. So the current E2 um, goes along South Dakota and then comes up here to Sargent and then onto Gallatin before continuing to Fort Totten. Whereas the proposed network, the C71, which is analogous to the E2, you can see just stays on South Dakota. So that might be what they were referring to with enhanced bus service. Um, yeah, that's possibly what they were referring to, but um, agreed that this gap here is significant. And until that's addressed, um, we are lacking important access along the corridor. So if, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So if, we, if we're talking about the, the ask is a good ask. I'm not denying that. But also, as you just pointed out, there a segment of... Um, the former E2 is now eliminated. And so there's a whole section of people who live over in that area in, I guess, Gallatin and um, Sargent, um, who are gonna be, now they're gonna be like Fort, um, Fort Lincoln, they're gonna be denied bus service, okay? So- it, it, the, the, I don't know that I would make that comparison because it is most like at most a uh, three to five block walk to bus service that still connects them to Fort Totten all the way down to Ivy City and even you know further downtown. Whereas what Fort Lincoln is currently facing is essentially one bus route um, that winds all the way through um, to Brookland. And now they're going to have four bus routes. So well, I don't I'm, know that it's quite the same comparison, but I do I do hear you that you know neighbors who are on Sargent and Gallatin will now have to walk to the bus um, in a way that they don't because the E two is staying on South Dakota Avenue. Right, and and the thing is, is that and, and I'm it, taking the focus off of Fort Lincoln. 
um, and just looking at the rest of the corridor, um, there are substantial number of seniors who might use the bus, but mm -hmm. the ones that are actually dependent on it, that four or five blocks is like me walking from my house to um, uh, Lillian Huff, you know, the right. And, yeah. and so that 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 creates a substantial um, disadvantage for people who may not be able to easily walk. Right. And so, so when we focus on, uh, I believe, you focus on better bus, it's not just for the, the able-bodied is the wrong word, but those who are more ambulatory than others. VJ, BJ's trying to say something. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Kapoor. Uh, sorry. Um, I just, uh, I would just make two points on this. Uh, I'd say that continuous D DC 207 route service, while uh, a single seat ride from Fort Lincoln to Fort Totten is certainly my preference, it might be more of a maximal ask than simply requesting or allowing or conceding a secondary ask of filling the gap from Rhode Island Ave to um, 18th Street that currently exists in their draft. Mm -hmm. Because if we filled the gap, we would give DDOT an opportunity to, to invest in technology like Q jumps, signal priority, and we could, you know, with those changes to the roadway, should they end up occurring um, in the safety project, we would then be able to push for a DC 207 later. It seems a lot harder if that gap exists uh, for us to then have DDOT go back and invest in those technologies. So I don't know, I, I, I defer to everyone else. This is not a proposal. One could give DDOT the secondary cheaper, but in the interest of trade-offs, one could give them a secondary cheaper option uh, either you know, you could forcefully ask for DC 207 service from Fort Lincoln to Fort Totten, but acknowledge that simply filling the gap would go a long way towards enabling DDOT in order to provide these technologies as part of the safety project. Uh, or you could not because you wanted to give the maximal ask and let them maybe come up with that compromise. Um, that's, that's issue number one. And then on, similarly, relatedly, I'd say you have a number four after increasing Rhode Island ad service. Uh, I think everyone knows that Rhode Island ad service is a high priority of mine as well. Um, but again, in the interest of what can what's easier to go back and fix and change, should we not get it? Um, I think that the South Dakota Ave line might be more important than simply the frequency on Rhode Island Ave, which we could theoretically push for better of in subsequent years. Uh, and so that's, I, again, I'm not like, this isn't a strong proposal. It's just, I'm putting it out there. You could put this number three and put Rhode Island Ave service at number four uh, in your list of priority bullet points, and you could potentially give that trade-off option to, to WMATA. That's it. Got it. Very helpful. I think Connor got it. Got it all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move us to the next um, point. Um, number five, a desire for more frequent service on the new C57 route, which provides a new option for residents of Trinidad and Carver Langston to access Union Market, Noma, and U Street. Um, currently, the proposed C57 is um, low frequency or every 30 minutes. I'm going to bring the map back up so we can look at that. Um, especially interested, Jeffrey, to see if you have any thoughts on this um, as a neighbor who might be impacted by this. Thanks, Melissa. Um, well, <laughs> you know, looking at the map, it's it's you're trying to juggle in your head which one of these lines, you know, which which is being replaced for each. And I know the C57, you know, follows some of the route of the old um, like X3 that, that existed previously. Um, and then also like looking at the what the C53 there is the 90 or 92, something like that. Um, so yeah, it, it and 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 as a resident of Trinidad, you know, we're we're constantly we're we're on the edge of Ward Five down here, and we're not really talked about in all of the Rhode Island Avenue questions. But but what's happening in Ward Six affects us quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like having that Rhode Island Avenue, whatever service along along that, however many lines it is, having it being more frequent is would be wonderful. 
there's also the problem of I don't want to go on at length here, but you know, all of the there's so many silos here, and that's kind of one of the things that Jeremiah was talking about in a way that you know, within WMATA, we're not just talking about the the planning here. There also has to be the implementation and how that's worked out with the union and how that, you know, falls down into maintenance and, and number of buses and all that stuff. But then there's also the fact that we've got the silo of the city versus the silo of WMATA here. And that kind of goes back into the um, South Dakota thing and the way that VJ was talking about it, that it becomes like a chicken and egg thing. Like mm -hmm. do, we, do we have the bus service and then we get the road fixed, but we don't get bus service until we've got a road that can actually handle it kind of thing. And mm -hmm. we see that right now on Florida Avenue a lot. Yesterday, um, my wife was trying to take our son to the doctor and his, his doctor's office is right by the Shaw station uh, at 6th and S. And taking the bus, you know, it was is a thing we normally do, and they they take the D four down to take uh, to Eighth and K, and then grab one of the nineties to go up there. But Florida Avenue, as you know, is a mess around New York and um, Dave Thomas Circle right now, and the buses weren't moving. They were like thirty minutes, literally, mm -hmm. not to get from Fourth and Florida to New York and Florida, a, a distance of not even four blocks. Um, so I had to stop what I was doing, jump in the car, go get them, and then drive them the rest of the way so that he wouldn't be 40 minutes late for his doctor's appointment. Um, so all of these changes, all that to say, whatever additional frequency we can get for the C57 route would be fantastic until WMATA and DDOT are able to untie the Gordian knot that is getting through the metro under the metro tracks and through New York Avenue there on Florida, all of this is kind of wishful thinking. Right. Um, and I just, I feel like maybe one of the things we need to, we need to note that somewhere in our thing here that like, please, WMATA continue to work. Uh, you know, we, we, we love that you're working with DDOT on, on some of these bus priority projects, keep working with them to push them harder um, because we've got a long way to go. I might jump in and I think all those points are very well said. I don't, you know, I think it's unlikely that we will get everything we ask for uh, from WMATA. And there are certainly other things to be focused on in improving bus service in the district. But I think of the task force work in part as a you know, setting a benchmark that we can come back to. And when there are opportunities, let's say, to talk about the funding levels that Ward 5 residents would want for bus service, we have a list of things that we think that money could be spent on. Um, and as there are additional opportunities to, let's say, increase service, um, we have a short list of, of things to go to. Um, the good news on Florida Avenue is that, um, you know, the Dave Thomas Circle construction is supposed to wrap up this winter. The bus priority project for First Street Northeast to U Street has already started, and the segment between First Street Northeast and 8th Street Northeast um, is actually on the schedule relatively soon. I think it's supposed to start next year. Um, so to your point, Jeff, um, or Jeffrey, um, some of that work is uh, is ongoing and yes we need all of the ducks lined up to make a real dent there but um i think we have a lot to be hopeful about thanks connor it's helpful context um i'm going to transition us back to our notes oops not that Sorry, I have one question on the C57. Um, the bus stops, are there, I was wondering if you guys had looked into how many bus stops there are, whether it would be better to consolidate some of these as well. I know there was like a whole list of them, but I was wondering about C57 in particular. Question. Um, Connor, do you know where that list is? Do we um, have a list? 
the list of bus stops on C57 that are being consolidated? No, I'm no, actually looking like, at the, sorry. Yeah, just like what stops are on the C57. No, no, I got that question from somebody else earlier today. I think for new routes, we haven't gotten to that level of planning oh. detail yet. And so in the fall, my understanding is that once Metro has taken all this feedback in and knows what it's going to move forward with, then they will thinking be thinking about where to um, install new new stops. Oh, my bad. I So I was on the interactive map and I thought that those white dots were the stops. That's why I asked the question. My bad. I don't know if those aren't then. Or those are just pre-existing bus stops. You might have captured a detail that uh, we overlooked. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, so if you go to share your feedback and if you go to the interactive map, you can look at like where they have bus stops, but some of those are existing ones, right? So I don't know if like for the C57 in particular, if it's helpful to have Florida and R and Florida and first and then Florida and third, or whether it's like helpful to consolidate a couple of those in our feedback tool. Um, we may not have a good way to do that on the fly right now, but why don't we follow up on that point um, as we work to finalize recommendations? Thanks for pointing that out, though, Uma, um, because the, we have been talking about, we did have a little, I think that's further down in our some of our recommendations about um, consolidation along North Capitol to increase the reliability of the bus there. So this is definitely something that I think is worth considering and asking also for the C57. Okay, let me go back to sharing. Um, I'm looking at this number six here and actually have a question for you, Connor, did we mean C41 or C71? Because C41 doesn't really go through Ivy City. Um, yeah, that could be a typo. Um, do you have the 24 seven network map up by any chance? Let me pull that up. I just have the, um, the basic one. Um, so let me pull up the 24 seven. Proposed 24 hour service map. All right, let me switch my screen share to that. Ben. Yeah, I don't I don't think a C41 goes in Ivy City. Uh, it stays along Bladensburg. Right. Um, but I think it's possible. It's a 71, C71. Yeah, I think you meant the seven. No, if so I I this is a recommendation or an idea that came from our office. I'm happy to speak to okay. it. So okay. if you look, it might, it might be helpful to start downtown. Okay. Um, so for some of these overnight routes, um, at hours of the day when Metro is not running, i.e. between midnight and 4 or 5 a.m., um, some of these routes actually change and get longer so that the bus service replicates some of the um, rail service that obviously isn't in operation at that time of the day. Um, I think with the idea of covering Metro stops, but also I think trying to make sure that service for, you know, areas of the district that have more of a nightlife is still robust. And so the idea, I, the idea would be, um, for the C41, just for certain hours of the day, when the alternative routes in Ivy city are not in operation, could we run C41 along Mount Olivet to, let's say, West Virginia Avenue um, just um, for a few blocks and then back to Bladensburg Road on Montana? Um, you know, there's not, really, there wouldn't be a lot of residents impacted by that change right. you know, along that stretch. But if you think about people who might work at restaurants or breweries or other establishments in Ivy City, um, this might be a change that, you know, provides them meaningful access to bus service. Yeah, that's a great point. This stretch here from on um, Bladensburg from Mount Olivet to New York is, you know, mostly Arboretum on one side. 
Um, and then um, I'm trying to think what's over here on the left side. Mr. Montague would know better than me. Cemetery. Um, that's yes. The, that's the current, um, it was supposed to be New City and, and now that's gone, kind of gone away. Right. So um, right now it's the bus lot um the old um uh charter school mm -hmm. that's where they're they're planning to put the warehouse right and the so, u-haul that's over there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, to your point connor um a lot of residents wouldn't be impacted this is probably during the day largely just to keep things moving and on their way to residential areas um so you're saying to make a recommendation that it may be turn here on Mount Olivet and then go up West Virginia and then figure out something to do at the fun roundabout. Yeah. Together. Yeah, I think some of the context here is that, you know, I think Ivy City has been impacted probably more than a lot of neighborhoods by changes in the cost of like ride share. You know, I think a lot of people used to take Ubers and Lyfts out there. Now those trips are probably two or three times more expensive than they used to be. So if we want Ivy City to continue to be an, a nightlife destination, it would be great to provide more robust service there. Yeah, it's a great point. It also makes me think about our ask for accessibility on New York Avenue, because <laughs> maybe we could get the bus on this tiny little stretch of New York um, which isn't really what our ask is, but um, it could, you know, plant a seed um, for expanding access there. Okay, thank you for explaining that. So that's um, this number six ask here, modify the 24 seven network. Um, and then number seven, express concern about proposed service reduction or North Capitol Street, which will see 15 minute headways on the proposed D30 instead of 12 minute head headways on the existing 80. Um, and this is where we're, you know, analyzing, recommend, recommending that they analyze stops on North Capitol, see if consolidation would speed up service. Um, Uma, Torrance, wondering if you all have thoughts here. So I haven't looked into the data, but I can say anecdotally, I see less traffic on like less, sorry, um, I would be curious to hear from Vomara what the most used bus stops are, because I see more on North Cap and T because that's the only way people can cross over and then more on um, Bryant, but I, uh, and sometimes on W, but it's really sort of sparse in how many people are using out, but there is, I think, opportunities for consolidation, but I would be curious to hear from Vomara what, how much ridership they get because it is also an access point for schools in the morning as well like I see a lot yes. of school children using it and so I know that people just use the bus stop that's closest to them um and because there's another bus stop that's been eliminated because of the Macmillan construction I think people have moved sort of further down uh, my only concern with eliminating a stop would be because of the access point if you miss W or V street you have to wait till you get to T because you're unable to cross North Cap Street um, and right. because of the underpass. And so just making sure that eliminating a bus stop doesn't mean um, that people have to wait longer and then walk backwards to their house. Right, right. That's a good recommendation too on making sure Wamada's, maybe they have feedback on the most used stops or yeah, where there's density. Okay, Torrance, any thoughts? I don't know if this is a bus that you ride or have thoughts on. I do not. And so uh, I mostly ride any bus. And so I'll just wait to get feedback during that time. Okay. I You kind of cut out. You mostly ride the what? 88-0. Okay. So that's the one that we're kind of looking at now. We're looking at this D30. Um, and... What we're considering, because this is what would um, replace the 80, and it's looking like the headways would be increased. Um, this is going to be a medium frequency uh, bus. And so um, one of the things we're considering is, you know, asking WMATA to analyze bus stop reductions um, or consolidation to help it go faster. Um, I don't know if you want to contribute any thoughts to the possibility of bus stop consolidation along North Capitol. Um, 
I I agree with that. And so I'm taking notes. And so you mentioned median. And so I'd like to advocate for high frequency, uh, 10 minutes or better. And I heard uh, the Macmillan site, you know, kind of mentioned. I think that's another reason. Um, as I communicated a couple weeks ago, I'm looking for or hoping for improved service, mm -hmm. uh, especially because of the elimination of the frequency. That's helpful. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my notes. Let, let me ask this question. La last night, it, it uh, in, in fact, a couple of nights this week, I heard something about um, opposition to Metro moving some stuff, some bus lines to First Street. And, and the folks were saying, don't do it. And it seemed like they were so I don't know is does this take away from the the current 80 route and move um new service to first street or is it exist I, I don't know if it exists or, or, or I know that there was just huge noise about um having buses on on on, on first street yeah so a lot of that so they're not going to get rid of the 80 again this d30 is what would be comparable to the current 80. It'll stay on North Capitol. Some of the neighbors in Bloomingdale have expressed concern specifically about this section of the C-55, which will um, come down First Street Northwest here before um, going down Rhode Island Avenue. Um, and um, we've heard concerns about um, traffic, um, snarls on First Street parking um, and other impacts. And so those are concerns we've raised to WMATA. We're asking them to address neighbors' concerns, answer questions um, that neighbors have about this area. But um, but yeah, it's not this D30 that goes on North Capitol. It's this First Street. Currently, there is not a bus um, that goes on First Street. So this would be a new change. So the, 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 let me ask this real quick, and you may not know this. Where does the G2 end up that used to run from Georgetown to um, 3rd Street? And then during the tunnel construction, it got moved around. And I thought it was on first for a little while. No, so, I think it's always, to my at least as long as I've lived here, it's been always on, um, it ends right now at 2nd and W Street. Um, okay. It does okay. a little turnaround right by um, the DC water side. That's where it starts again. Uh, but it, I think they moved it at some point from 4th to 3rd, but I, I can't remember when that happened. Uh, but usually it just runs on 4th Street and then comes down to Bryant, Bryant to 2nd, and then turns back. And they did some service changes in the middle during the construction, but I think it's back to the old route that it is, um, where it goes from 4th to Bryant, Bryant to 2nd, and then back again. Okay, thank you. And I just wanted to um, make sure that I understand, where where is the end of the line for the new D30? New D30, that's a good question. Let's find out. It looks like so the, yeah. the big the big change is that it goes west along E Street instead of going west along Massachusetts Avenue and then H Street. I think the terminus is um is uh Federal Triangle, if memory serves me. Yeah, that's what it looks like if you see here. Okay, and the reason I ask is because at one time it stopped at McPherson Square. There was a time that it went to the Kennedy Center. Yeah, one of the trade-offs, so when we had our Ward 5 bus network engagement meeting with WMATA representatives, they talked about some of the trade-offs they're making in this network. And one of the things I remember them saying was that in some instances, they're opting for shortening routes to make it possible to increase the frequency of those lines. So you might have to, your bus might not take you as far, but it will, the, the lines will be faster. Another example of this is the P6, the current P6. 
which goes from Rhode Island Avenue and winds basically like all through the city until it gets all the way down to Anacostia. That is no longer, they've kind of chopped it up a bit so that it'll now be a more frequent um, route, but there won't be a line that goes that whole path anymore. So I think this might be another example of that. Yeah, thank you. Yes, go ahead, Emma. Um, just my last comment on this, on the North Cap route, I mean, because it's such a vital corridor and it would be really helpful, what what can we do? What, I guess the question is to, I guess this group is, what can we recommend that would help increase the frequency of service from 20 to 12? Um, because I think initially, I maybe I'm incorrect, but I thought initially when they're, because, you know, they also changed the 80 to a 24-7 service and it's really popular. And I think, I, I would just love to know how we can like advocate for more frequent service on North Capitol Street, as opposed to, and whether that's consolidation of stops, um, you know, shortening it somewhere. But I think, you know, it's such a, re it's really such an important corridor. And as someone who lives a couple of blocks away, it is faster for me to walk to Union Station than it is to take the 80 sometimes. Um, and that's like a solid two and a half mile walk, you know? And I think that's another point, the fact that it can take people to Union Station too. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and so for us, right, like it is, you know, it's ridiculous that like it's faster, it's so inconvenient to take the 80 to Union Station just because it gets snarled in traffic when a lot of people are using it. And same for, you know, I, I run on that route a lot. So sometimes I run back and forth like a couple of miles and still see the same people waiting at the bus stop. So anything mm -hmm. we can do, any suggestions we can make to improve headways on this or advocate for more frequent service would be really helpful. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on that, Connor? You're kind of near there. So North Capitol Street is on the bus priority project list, but unfortunately the project is wrapped up in kind of a slow moving capital project for North Capitol Street that, um, you know, is, is frankly still, I would wager five plus years away from um, happening. You know, I think one thing the task force could recommend is that DDOT uncouple those things and pursue some bus priority projects on North Capitol Street, you know, sooner, given the reality that, um, you know, a big overall of the corridor is not likely anytime soon. Um, you know, the, the good news is DDOT has started to do some more spot treatments on their bus priority program. Um, and we encouraged them last year, folks may remember to look at Rhode Island Avenue um, and Fort Totten as particular kind of pain points there. Um, so there may be opportunities to say, you know, look, maybe at New York Avenue and other pinch points along the corridor, there may be some places where it makes sense to do some, some shorter bus priority treatments now. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Emma and Torrance, for weighing in on that. It's really helpful to hear your thoughts. I'm gonna take us back to our notes for our last two um, points. We kind of already touched on this, uh, but we do wanna reiterate the need for bus service on New York Avenue between 4th Street and Bladensburg Road to address extremely compelling equity and safety considerations. Um, so currently there's no bus service at all um, between Florida Avenue and Bladensburg Road. Um, I'll show you the map so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and there are some pretty important um, things along the corridor up here on New York Avenue. There's a, a men's shelter. Um, there has been some housing for um, migrants along this corridor here. And so we know these are residents who um, are some of the least likely to have a personal vehicle. Um, and so expanding bus access here is, is important, um, as well as the reality that there's, um, as Connor mentioned earlier, um, important nightlife, retail access, um, those kinds of things further north of New York. Um, and then our last note, and this goes to what you were asking about, Mr. Montague, um, but we are requesting that WMATA answer Bloomingdale residents' concerns about the proposed C-55 route, traveling along First Street um, and work with DDOT to limit and mitigate traffic parking and noise impacts. Um, Councilmember Parker met with WMATA leadership earlier this week to ask questions about this. 
um, and to explore possible alternatives with WMATA. Um, and we've requested a meeting with them um, so that WMATA can directly engage with neighbors and answer their questions. And we'll be eager to see, um, yeah, their answers to the many concerns that we've heard from neighbors on this point. Um, I wanted to go back to uh, number eight, I'm sorry. And so just yeah. to mention some, some other places uh, to consider as it relates to the bus along North, New York Avenue uh, mm -hmm. with Planet Fitness, you know, and uh, Ivy yes. City, as well as Target and Moms, you know, which is a great place to get organic foods. Yes. So many other businesses along New York Avenue where, you know, uh, having a bus would be very, very helpful. Yes. And there's limited parking there. So um, having a public transit option um, incentivizes people to go to that area. Could I also just plus one that and say that, you know, that retail corridor has also suffered post COVID, um, you know, the Nike store closed down, I believe there were right. other store closures. I mean, and also because, um, you know, obviously this isn't part of this, but you know, there's, there's no direct link between union market and Ivy city right now in terms of buses or like an easy one, like I, there's not a good bike connector, there's not a good transit connector. And so right. anything we can also do to improve getting people to New York Avenue would also just help Ward 5 residents. And I say this as someone whose spouse, whose spouse drives to moms every week to get groceries. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps with, um, you know, some of the longstanding pollution concerns we have for Ivy City neighbors um, along the New York Avenue corridor. There are many, problems, I think, um, that bus service would solve here. Okay, anything else on these nine, um, these nine recommendations we've shared so far? I'm going to stay on the map here. Um, I included in our document um, other topics to explore. And the first one is a message we got from a neighbor um, who pointed out that this C41 bus, um, which is supposed to be analogous to the current B2, um, will now, when it reaches 17th Street along Bladensburg Road, will continue on 17th Street instead of Bladensburg. So presently the B2 um, continues on Bladensburg Road, but as you can see here, the C41 will kind of diverge and go on 17th Street instead. And this neighbor pointed out um, that that means the bus will be going away from recently built um, senior housing. Um, the density has been built up along Bladensburg Road quite a bit in recent years. It's also true that this new C41 would um, by going down 17th Street, provide direct access to some of the important retail there. So there's an Aldi and a Safeway, um, and they've also built new housing on 17th Street. Um, so there's density there as well. I would love to hear this task force's thoughts on, on this concern. My initial reaction was that I don't know that it's a significant enough change um, to want to want to see it go back to the current B2. Um, I think that we're only talking a block or two of distance and the access to the retail and the new housing on 17th Street could be worth this change. I'd also love to hear Wamata's reasoning if it has something to do with traffic or um, speeding up the, the route, um, but would love to hear thoughts, especially from um, Jeffrey and Mr. Montague. I imagine this might be a bus you take. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Thanks. Was it? Yeah, uh, I ride the B two a lot. Um, the the move over to Seventeenth Street is a really good equity move, I think, for Carver Langston. Uh, it brings a it brings you know the bus closer to a lot of people in the apartments that are you know on the eastern side of the neighborhood there, over by Twenty First Street. Um, it's obviously it's not right in front of them but you know a block closer is a block closer um the one senior building that i think is the biggest um miss here with the b2 is the new delta towers building um right there at the starburst mm -hmm. uh, so and and you know that's that's where bladensburg road and 17th street are farthest apart so that's a, a very long block there 
along Benning Road um, as a walk for uh, for seniors to get to that bus. Um, but I I know that like by running it on 17th Street directly there instead of wandering through the Starburst and and some of the stuff along 14th um, south of H, this will speed the bus up. It'll speed up reliability. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of the change. I think, I think that's, I think those will be some of the things that WMATA says is why they're making these moves, but, um, yeah, it, it moves it a block further away from my house, but, um, I think overall there's, there's more wins than losses here for most people. That's kind of my read of it too. Go ahead, Uma. I have a question. So I'm looking at the map. Um, and I'm curious, curious to hear from Jeffrey. Is so it goes down 17 and comes back up 19? Like, why is there that weird loop? And is that helpful or is that um I'm not super, super familiar. I'm familiar a little bit more with like Stanton Park, but not as familiar with like 19th Street. So I'm curious about this little loop that goes around. It's one-way streets. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. That's helpful. That's kind of my calculation too, Jeffrey, that there are more wins than losses here. And I would be interested to hear from neighbors in the Delta Towers about what bus, what buses they're taking. Um, because they have access to quite a few on that corner, but this would move the C41 away from them. Um, but um, I, I kind of made the same calculations. Let, let me let me ask this. I I ride that bus. I wouldn't say I'm a frequent rider, but I I ride it enough to see what goes on there. I'm concerned that a lot of people who come from Mount Rainier South, uh, traveling south, get off that bus right near CVS. Now. Yes, there's a lot of undesirable activity that occurs right there, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those people who get off um, just after Denny's and the people who get off at where the CBS are, and then the ones that go down as far as Starburst Plaza uh, uh, don't deserve having to walk um, a considerable distance to continue on their route because not only does uh, does that take away the connection to uh, the streetcar and to um, buses that uh, may be on um, H Street, and uh, the, that bus used to continue straight on down through those neighborhoods. And I know that there were people who did get off of um, the buses along that route before it reached Potomac Avenue. So, I'm I'm I understand that there's there may be a benefit um to the to the the new construction and the the two uh retail out uh, to what we used to call Heck and Jamal and um Aldi's which used to be the the birthing place. Um so there's a win for Carver Langston. But there's also a loss for um, the folks that currently use it. I have to step off to another meeting. So if I not look like I'm inattentive, I'm really not. I'm just trying to juggle meetings right now. No worries. We're so grateful for your input, Mr. Montague. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you all for being here. Um, that's everything that I have. I also included in the document bus stop consolidation. Um, I am generally uh, glad to see some bus stop consolidation in, in this proposal. I think it'll um, improve frequency and um, help the bus go smoother. Um, but I did share it just in case anything stood out to anyone um, as a particularly concerning elimination. Um, so feel free to let us know if you see anything there. Um, there are a few in 5D that made me think of you, Jeffrey, um, at Trinidad and Queen. Um, and Benning at 19th. Don't know if 
So those are stops that are close to you that you have thoughts about. Uh, the Trinidad and Queen one, uh, there's there's a stop pretty close to the south at Levis and just north at Miggs. Um, it makes sense to to not, I understand why they're looking to knock that one out. Um, you still have good access um, with the MIGS stop to get to the Trinidad uh, Rec Center there. Um, to address one of Mr. Montague's uh, concerns about the B2 slash C41 being moved down to 17th, he mentioned about connections to the streetcar and to the H Street buses. I mean, the, the D22, which is the new X2, uh, it, it, it just it'll still connect to it there at 17th from the looks of things. Um, and there's the streetcar stop at 19th that it will also connect to. So I, you know, where I think it's just there's still those connections still exist uh, along that corridor. They're just being moved a couple blocks to the east. Thanks for pointing that out. That's helpful. Okay, that concludes all of the recommendations and notes we wanted to share with you all and get your thoughts on. Um, I think we've been able to collect some really helpful feedback. Um, happy to open it up for more general discussion or questions um, or recommendations that you all wanted to lift up that we didn't include, um, but happy to also move towards closing. Yes, uh, Sherry. Okay, uh, just a couple of uh, comments. Oops. I'm sort of on the other end by uh, Sargent and uh, Eastern yes. uh, Avenue. And uh, so far, the uh, proposals that uh, uh, are out there are for a P32 and a P35, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, I th would certainly, certainly works in that area. What happens, though, with the re elimination of the E2 and putting everyone in the, on uh from Sergeant Road over to South Dakota and they plan to eliminate the stop at uh I think it's for P35 uh at Chillum and Eastern for people on on Sergeant for they're going to have to find their way over to either South Dakota or else if they are closer to the Gallatin area, uh, they may have to find their way over to Chillum in order to get on a bus. And I have noticed that there are several people that are using wheelchairs mm -hmm. that, uh, and so it's going to be, a, you know, it's gonna be a lot more, more difficult and if you look at the proposed uh, frequency of service, uh, the it's the P32, I believe, uh, would only would be operating on the weekends, and the the common stop would with uh, P35 would be Sergeant Road and Eastern Avenue. So that uh, on the weekends, uh, people who would have used the E2 uh, that are near Sargent and Gallatin would either have to go over to uh, South Dakota or else they're going to have to get to Sargent and Eastern in order to get to have you know bus service on the weekends because of the uh, you know, rerouting of the folks uh, of, of the service off of uh, uh, Sergeant Road. And so I, you know, I, I think that's something uh, to be, uh, we, we can think about, but also, which is probably more of an issue for the people in Ward 4, but is uh, the new C83, which is the Friendship Heights to Fort Totten service. And that service, I believe, is only going to be operating on weekdays. So if anybody over on my side of town wants to use something beside Metro Rail, they are going to have difficulty getting all the way over to uh, 
you know, uh, for, uh, to uh, friendship heights because it, they're not going to get there. It's not that, you know, you're not going to be able to do that on a Saturday or a Sunday. And I think a lot of people would not, don't want to necessarily pay the Metro rail fare to get all the way, you know, to go across town. So those were just some thoughts that I had uh, when I was sort of looking at uh, these, uh, you know, these proposed uh, uh, service routes. For personally, where I live, I can get, you know, I don't have a problem. Uh, the, my stops are still, are gonna be available, but for other people that are a little further away, I think it will be an issue. Thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you, Ms. Alston. And you answered a question I was gonna ask you, which is how does it impact you personally? Um, so thank you for, for answering that. And we've captured those thoughts. Any other additional um, input or thoughts, questions? Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention the D92. Um, it's the one that is replacing part of the G2. I think same concerns as I flagged before that it's um, because the elimination of the G2 means that there's no access for Bloomingdale um, residents to, uh, I've heard this about Detroit too, but I've, you know, there's no access to get to um, onto that bus um, from our neighborhoods. And so it, again, while it connects to um, so I have the map open right here to like DuPont and all the way up to Georgetown University, the access from Bloomingdale would not be that easy anymore. And so um, I'm not sure like where New, where New Jersey, they could like actually be able to like get people access, but that's sort of one of the biggest concerns I've heard is that because the G2 and G8 routes will change, that doesn't leave people with direct access to be able to go to Georgetown um, and West End at all. Yeah. Or even Logan Circle for that matter, right? Which is like a pretty popular right. route, I would say. Um, right. So that's one. And then I just sort of wanted to echo something that Sherry said. Um, just, I, you know, when council members, when, the, when your office sends a letter to WMATA, I mean, I think just reiterating the infrastructure needs, I know that's not um, a WMATA decision, that's a DDOT decision, but just, you know, as we're building out this network, um, ensuring bus shelters, AD accessible sidewalks, that people can actually take the bus and then, you know, being able to cross the bus, um, that's something that DDOT really needs to prioritize. I think, the you know, for example, the third in Florida Avenue, Northwest stop, it has a bus stop on either end, but it's uh, people are just unable to access it because no one stops at that crosswalk. Um, it's an unsignaled one. And so um, if we can also urge DDOT to sort of work hand in hand and actually building out this network, just in, even in terms of infrastructure upgrades would be super helpful outside of priority lanes. Thank you. Anything else? Monica, I'm noticing we haven't heard from you and I'm also noticing we haven't focused much on University Heights. Um, so wanna invite your thoughts. Thank you, yeah. So just as um, uh, Sherry was uh, saying, my stops, um, they are going to remain. So in that regard, you know, I have very little complaints. I was just thinking about um, the replacement for um, the 80 bus, which is uh, a line that I do use frequently. And so obviously already with traffic along the corridor, that 12 minute um, uh, gap between the buses is usually a little bit more, a little bit longer. So it does make you think with an extension of 15 minute headway that it will actually get even longer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as uh, Huma was saying, it is a, it is a very busy um, line and you know, people, a lot of people rely on it. Um, I was thinking specifically about the new recreation center um, there. And I know that this kind of falls outside of the purview of this meeting, but I think um, the, the whole conversation about making it work as a network with, you know, useful bus stops that is something that perhaps we might have, should uh, also focus on it was incredibly hot well has been incredibly hot in this past couple of days and the stop for the new rec center has absolutely no shade whatsoever mm -hmm. so it's practically impossible to be standing there waiting for for a bus in either direction really um, but yeah other than that I share you know, Ward 5's uh, concerns about equity um, when it comes to 
other parts of the world, so specifically mm -hmm. New York Avenue. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I guess I I I have uh, I I got lucky in in this re re redesign um, so far. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. Um, that's definitely feedback we'll include about the shelter near the new rec center. Um, you're absolutely right. On a day like today, it would have been really difficult uh, to stand and wait for a bus there um, or even sit with no shade. But um, good to know that your personal you know, personal bus rides are not um, negatively impacted. And I think um, this D30 will remain a focus in the comments that we um, develop. Sorry, Any yeah, other? just to add, especially coming with the new um, supermarkets that are um, slated to open later, I believe yes. later this year. So definitely people traveling up to Fort Totten via bus, right. yes. you know, will need more, more like a reliable service, really. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And the same is likely true uh, for the D30 um, towards Brookland uh, with the Trader Joe's um, that's supposed to be coming there as well. So that might that might impact those trips. Any other additional comments folks want to add as we near the end? Okay, well, thank you all for such a helpful discussion um, and for your input. From here, uh, we will work to you know, take the thoughts that were shared here um, and begin developing uh, a letter similar to the one um, that Councilmember Parker sent WMATA last year. Just like we did last year, we will share it with you all um, to get your kind of last thoughts on it, um, changes that you uh, might recommend or want to see before it goes out officially. But um, tonight's meeting was really helpful in continuing to refine our um, recommendations as we put them together. And just want to thank you again for your service and your time uh, for our office and for all Ward 5 neighbors as we work on making sure our thoughts and feedback on this proposal is robust. So thank you. Thank you, Melissa and Connor. Super helpful. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Good to see all of you. Have a great night. Thanks. Have a great night. You do the same.